So another thing to take note of in this otherwise very simple line is that there is this use of the suffix ij convention. Now, of course, this is nothing rocket science about it, but uh, just like to bring your attention to it <clears throat> so as to uh, bring to the forefront for discussion sake uh, how we represent a table in a very compact manner. So notice that we didn't list out a whole one, two page long of let X1 be assigning uh, garment one to tailor one, let X2. So once you serialize the, the reference number, then you will end up having to delineate X1, X2, X3 until X17. You have no choice because otherwise nobody knows X13, right? Is that garment two to tailor four or tailor five? No idea until you list it out. And whether for you to list out is a chore or for people to read is also a chore. <laughs> Right, because we have to scan through everything to find out our desired, uh, you know, uh, two, 2D cross-reference uh, converted to the serialized form, which number represents what. But when we stick to the IJ convention, it is very simple. Look at this, right? It's just a one-liner if garment I is assigned to Taylor J. You know, in other words, we preserve the row column <clears throat> coordinates, right, in the IJ convention. So I just want to bring out to you that this is uh, very important to keep note of because uh, don't try to serialize it because it will be very lengthy, unwieldy and doesn't add to the uh, comprehension of the problem, you know, or facilitation of the modeling. Okay. Now, um, of course, next step is to formulate the objective function. Uh, we have, for example, 19 times whether or not we assign garment 1 to Taylor 1, right? Because when we do that, then, if we recall, Taylor 1 will take 19 hours. Now, because x11 is going to be either 1 or 0, remember, because solver is going to constrain the values of xij to either 0 or 1. Later on, we'll, we'll force that by declaring that they are all binary. So, uh, it becomes x, all the xijs become big switches. It's either 0 or full connection, right? So, when it's full connection, it, 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 the value is 1 then 19 times xij will be 19 because it's 1. Yeah? But if it is not assigned, then solver will force the variable to 0 and 19 times the 0 is 0. Any number type of 0 is 0. Great. Yeah? So we have a big switch here that is automatic. So <clears throat> if Garmin 1 was actually assigned, we will incur 19 hours and that's true. Right. So uh, all these addition of the sum product, uh, addition of the products of the variable and the coefficient, it is linear, it is permitted, and it is correct, even when the values of ij jumps non-linearly, just 0 to 1. Yeah? Second thing to observe about this is that, look, we are adding up all the total times right together. Now, at first, it might seem right, but think about it, right? <clears throat> Shouldn't we be minimizing the maximum time taken by all the seamstress, all the tailors? Think about it, because when, when Taylor 1, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> was working on a wedding gown, Taylor 2, 3, 4, 5 would have been working on something, and that real time is, you know, parallel for all the tailors. So when, for example, the long the tailor taking the longest time to complete, for example, maybe Taylor two was working on wedding gown, right? Uh, when she finishes, all the rest would have finished, you know. So so. We wonder why are we, minimizing the sum total rather than the maximum? Can you see the the, the question here, right? So it's not really that I'm saying that it's wrong, but I'm trying to bring out this potential confusion because at some point some of you might be looking at it and say is that right yeah because we are adding the time serially when actually it is occurring in parallel in real life or it could have been arranged that they, the the tailors uh, uh, start work together right so is this addition of the the otherwise parallel time um correct a, a, a proper reflection of the business issue <clears throat> and the answer is that uh, as it is, in terms of hours, it is not quite right. But because 
we are using the hours as a proxy into um, payment for the tailors. Yeah. So if you multiply by the rate of payment, like ten dollars per hour, example, just for simplicity, um, and everybody gets the same rate of payment. So there is no seniority. If Taylor one has been a twenty year uh tailor, uh, she doesn't get more rate higher pay than Taylor five who just joins the industry. Okay. If supposing everybody gets the same pay rate, then we can factor out the ten dollar per hour and just minimize the total hours. Because to Tina, she'll be paying out money right to the sum total of hours spent by minimizing total hours she will be minimizing her total payout in in totality not to individual tailor yeah so um so it's, it's a it's a sort of a proxy uh, pseudo expression that if we manage to minimize the total number of hours added together then tina also enjoys uh, minimization of her total money paid out to the tailors Okay, so keep that in mind every time we're trying to minimize sum of physical hours. Just think again because that cannot be the right thing to do uh, to, to minimize sum of individual hours that are concurrently carried out, right? So, so remember that there is this missing factor somewhere. And of course, if the assumption that individual actors, like individual act tailors in, in this case, are not paid homogeneously there is some sense of seniority okay then this expression would not code and you would have to multiply by the actual rate so that we are minimizing dollars then that will be accurate okay so keep in mind uh this this uh, sort of hidden expressions and to carry out <clears throat> the column wise and the row wise uh, constraints uh, we show here the, the, the examples. I, I would suggest you look at uh, this set of examples as one. Yeah? Because uh, it really expresses just one type of constraint. So it's exactly one tailor per garment. So um, for each garment, row-wise, right, we must ensure that there's at least one and there's at most one. At least one because garment is customer. Customer deposits the garment, right? So you have to get it done. At most one is more Tina's policy because uh, if there's more than one, maybe there is argument or lack of accountability. Okay, fine. So, so combining these two, at least one and at most one, that means equal to one. Then we have this, right? So all the uh, first garment, notice here. There are two C's that we're using. Consistently and carefully ensure uh, consistently and carefully ensure that in this constraint all only the ones are used in the i index and we run through the j index from one to five okay so we say that garment one garment one is worked on by exactly one tailor how do we say garment number one we don't tell the model garment number one simply because we label it one we don't tell the model garment one simply because we list it as the position one constraint these two calling it number one constraint and positioning it at the first row they don't have any meaning at all okay so you can reorder the the rows well if you want it, it would not <clears throat> affect solver's decision in terms of optimality yeah so uh, it is through this C and C, uh, consistently and carefully labeling the I index <clears throat> that we achieve uh, the intention to tell the model this is constraint for garment one. And once we get that, we copy and paste and C and C, right? Consistently and carefully change it to two. Of course, dropping whatever variable like two, three that is not available and so on yeah so there's just basically one type of constraint and if we have five thousand garments because business is good maybe with a computerized kind of assignment nature then we can really write a program to implement optimization right and by which time uh we wouldn't be typing this out and all that we will be just um, totally software driven yeah? so you see that this is just uh 
one type of constraint and it's easily scaled up to 5,000 garments if, if our business grows. Yeah? And likewise, our business can grow uh, in terms of have ability to employ more uh, tailors, more workers. So policy is no more than one garment. How come no more than one? How come not exactly one? Well, pigeonholes principle. Now you might want to Google about that, right? So what that says is a very simple idea. That is, we have far, um, uh, where was that? Four garments and five tailors. So pigeonhole principle says, definitely there will be one, uh, someone, one tailor who is left uh, unassigned because uh, if it's one to one, right, then it is impossible to fulfill uh, to match four to five. So um, we must allow for the possibility that one of the tailors, we don't know who yet, will get zero number of garments. Yeah, but otherwise the rest of the tailors will get at the most one, at most, maybe zero, maybe one. So we use less than equal to one. Clear? Now, uh, just for the sake of uh, understanding and a bit of a challenge, if we mistakenly, <laughs> and I sort of already given you the answer, right? That is not right. But if we mistakenly um, replace all these less than equal to with equal to, because it's so easy to make this mistake in solver, isn't it? You select equal yeah, by, by a sort of a in the moment thought, oh, I thought it should be equal because upstairs is equal, right? So we just set it to equal uh, instead of less than equal to. Just one moment of carelessness. What happens now again because nobody can beat mathematical uh, fundamental principles so by pigeonhole principle it is impossible to assign four garments to five tailors but you are insisting solver to be able to do that and solver cannot beat the underlying logic so solver is going to come back by saying impossible to solve it. okay so it's a very small step <laughs> for us to just go from uh, less than equal to equal, all right. For in fact, for all the uh, the constraints, even if you have five hundred constraints, it is easy for solver for us to just do one selection, yeah, um, to make this five thousand mistakes uh, at the same time. So so be very careful about this less than equal to. Don't um rush through in haste and don't just copy and paste blindly just because upstairs is equal. So downstairs has to be equal. No, huh? 